Welcome back, 0K fans, to Natalie at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and we're going to end off tonight's exhibition match stream with a match between Silent Shadow and Spartacus on Tartarus, which is a map that I always think is super cool looking and super cool playing that I love to show off. So I will, because it's a cool map. See, lava in the middle with all the lava rock everywhere and hills and such. It's cool. Anyway, I also don't like the fact that my camera's being all weird. I, I've i got to remember to make some bug report about the smooth... Actually, I think the smooth mesh scroll is going to cause problems in this map as well. And eh, not much. Okay, anyway, there's a bug. I mentioned it before. I'm not going to go into detail now. Let's just watch the game. So Silent Shadow going for light vehicles while Spartacus is going for the Spiderbot factory. Spartacus probably going to go for early fleas to attack around harass as best they can. Silent Shadow going for early darts for probably the same reason. And yep, there's the fleas. I'm guessing four or five of them. Five of them, indeed. That's what we're going to see. Two of them going north. Looks like they're going to be going to just keep an eye on this northwestern expansion. Figure out when Silent Shadow, if ever, is going to take it. Given that Silent Shadow is going for vehicles, I don't expect that the northwest is going to be taken anytime soon. I... What the heck? Huh. Never noticed that little texture before. Is that symmetric? Oh, no, it's not. Okay, anyway. So Silent Shadow probably not going to be going over here because if you think about it, Silent Shadow would have to terraform quite a lot just to get up, I think even to here, I'm not even sure. Let's double check. Yeah, even to get to the first plateau, it requires a lot of terraforming. Let alone to the second plateau. So I don't expect that Silent Shadow will be approaching that at all. But just in case, I mean, Spartacus did not know that at the time. They do now. They have no way in, though. These fleas are not going to be able to get much progress at all. And Silent Shadow will be able to pretty much take their entire corner of the map unopposed. However, at the same time, Spartacus will be able to take the southeast and northwest corners unopposed. At least until Silent Shadow gets air or actually does decide to terraform like mad. And they could decide to terraform like mad. There's really good reason to do so. There's a lot of metal up here. And honestly, given that Spartacus is going for spiders, that's free metal for Spartacus unless Silent Shadow terraforms or gets air. Otherwise... Spartacus is basically an extra 10, 20 metal ahead. Eight. Yeah, 20 metal ahead. Eight on these two plateaus and eight over here. That's a massive advantage. I seriously doubt that Spartacus wants to let Silent Shadow just take that. Silent Shadow obviously wants it. Sorry, Silent Shadow's going to let Spartacus take that. Spartacus obviously wants it. Silent Shadow, I seriously doubt that they're going to let that happen. At least for free. At this point, though, the southeast is going to be taken first, as usual. Normally, the map gets split north-south, despite the symmetry along the corner, like from southwest to northeast, it does typically get split north-south. Mostly because this area tends to be easier to defend, so players have an easier time spreading to the side. They tend not to go over the hill as quickly. I mean, in spider players, it really doesn't matter. And I think also because these metal extractors are closer, the ones in the plateau, they're closer to the south, like the southeast is closer to the south base, and northwest is closer to the north base. There's just a, lot, a few reasons to split north-south. And that's how it typically goes. Now at this point, Spark is really just jumping ahead. Their economy not quite ahead, but Silent Shadow basically has no military to push in with. Getting Wolverines out, because that's about all they have to get through the Venoms. I do not agree with that, by the way. I really don't. Fleas will completely stuff those Wolverines. And Hermits can help too, but Fleas will just stuff them. Once Spartacus sees the Wolverines, they'll probably get a mass flea army, just rush through, eat all the claws. I mean, there'll still be loads of Fleas left to get rid of the Wolverines. Properly supported, the Wolverines could do a lot of damage. But if they're not properly supported, that's it. There's nothing to be said. Spartacus will just be able to run roughshod over that. Not to mention the fact that Spartacus will very quickly and very easily go up here. They're already starting to take it. They are they are already starting to take the southeast side, the northwest side a little bit later. They will eventually take it. At this point, Silent Shadow very slightly ahead economically, but not for long. Better center presence, that is basically the difference, but at this point, a much better military from Spartacus. Silent Shadow's commander up at front does have a machine gun, but that's going to require getting close in. And it does manage to get close in. These Harmits are going to have a bit of a hard time. Now, Silent Shadow's commander, that is going to be able to hit the lower plateaus. Commanders, I mean, bots, like commanders, can get to the lower plateaus. It's the upper plateaus, but with Silent Shadow's having a recon com, that's a big problem. If Spartacus gets rid of the commander, Silent Shadow has no non-terraform or air way of getting up here. If Silent Shadow loses their commander. If not, though... 
then the Southeast is rather threatened. In fact, right now, the Southeast is rather threatened. This is a problem. This is a big problem that Silent Shadow is going to take advantage of. In fact, I think what will happen if Spartacus doesn't manage to completely repel and destroy Silent Shadow's commander is that Silent Shadow will actually take over the Southeast. They'll actually start building up their expansions over here, building up metal extractors, wind generators, getting a bunch of overdrive and getting all the metal they can. And here it comes, Silent Shadow's commander pretty much going to be able to tear this apart. There's not much available to deal with it. The Hermits are around, though. But they aren't being used to get rid of the commander, nor are they really being used to cut off any retreat. And no fleas. Still going for the... Still going for the Weavers. Sorry, Weavers, the Hermits, surprisingly enough. But at the same time, the Northwest is being taken. Spartacus is going to be able to get that. So while the Southeast is being taken over, Silent Shadow, just as I predicted, is taking the Southeast for themselves. I mean, for one thing, Spartacus knows. Spartacus has full vision. Remember, fleas are a map hack. I say that all the time. Fleas are a map hack. Never forget that. Never. Because if you're playing in Spider, you can pretty much assume your opponent, if you haven't thoroughly scouted the area you're in, your opponent knows you're there because they set up a flea in the first minute of the game at your location. Just about guaranteed. Now Spartacus, they do have the Northwest now, they are getting all that money. They have the economic advantage. The one thing they don't have, of course, is caretakers. They need to build up, or at least use the Weaver. Come on, the Weaver's right there. You could just build up the factory up. Or build more energy structures. Either way, it doesn't matter. The point is, use the resources, for crying out loud. Spartacus really does not have a material advantage just because they're accessing metal right now. They really don't. In fact, I would say that they actually have at a material disadvantage for the fact that Silent Shadow is producing far more with what they have. There's no... There's nothing going on here. There's nothing assisting the factory here. So this factory is producing 10 metal per second. Silent Shadow is producing at 20 metal per second. So Silent Shadow right now is double the production. And they have that southeast side. I mean, Spartacus, that's the northwest, but they're accessing and they aren't using the production even when you don't take access into account. Going for a gunship plant, though. Okay. Interesting choice. I mean, I can kind of see to get rid of the Wolverines, you might want to have Banshees. That makes sense. I'm still a bit surprised that Mass Flea did not come up. I mean, that seems obvious to me, but I guess I was thinking about it. Oh, what would happen? Oh, hey, there's Wolverines. What would I do? Rather than in the heat of the moment where you're thinking, Oh, crap, there's Wolverines right now. I've got to deal with this rather than, Oh, I see there's Wolverines in about a minute or so. Well, I'll take that time to think about my next move. So, I can kind of see that. And I might be wrong about Wolverines. Maybe Wolverines are a terrible idea. I might have that completely backwards. Sorry, not Wolverines. Fleas are a terrible idea to deal with Wolverines, that is. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I've never actually tried it because I've never played a Spider vs. Live Eagle matchup, come to think of it. Maybe once or twice. It's a rare matchup. Usually the maps that support Spider will do not support Live Eagles well. Tartarus is a weird map and it kind of does. Kind of doesn't. It's hard to really say. The point is, though, fleas do help deal with artillery type units, and the claws, while they would get rid of one flea each, maybe two, they're. Actually, they're free, come to think of it, so maybe it would be a problem. I mean, fleas are not free. But at the same time, 13 fleas is one wolverine, so it might still be worth it. Oh, okay, mass fleas. The problem with mass fleas is it gets countered by anything that has support. That's true. It's a fair point. So, I can see why it's not being used in this case, I suppose. Still seems like it's the sort of thing that would at least force that support to happen. Like, force your opponent to actually do something. And that means fewer Wolverines, and then you can just send in Hermits and such to deal with it. Or Hermits to tank the shots. But yeah, the Rapiers I totally agree with. That's a really good way of dealing with it. It also helps deal with the Scorchers right away, too. So really, that's a much better option. It just required a bit more build-up to it. At least, though, all the production is being used. That is the important thing. Spartacus is no longer accessing, however, they also no longer have an economic advantage. Bit of a problem. The Southeast is totally not theirs. Silent Shadow's commander is pretty much back up to full health, so there's no easy way to get rid of it. And even if it was gotten rid of, unless it blew up right in the middle of this expansion area, then it would still have to get rid of the expansion, and that would be hard to deal with from air. And now these these silly scorchers here that are just causing all the per all the pain in the world. I mean, this gunship plant's dead. It's managed to get like four rapiers out, and now it's dead. And now the crasher's out. Silent Shadow is turning this around very quickly. And really, it's all because Spartacus was not... I mean, even if they're going pure Hermit. That wouldn't have been a bad idea against the Wolverines. Not a great idea, but not a bad idea, because the Wolverine support wouldn't have 
stop that. But the problem is, and I still think, use we'll use Hermits to mind sweep, and then have Venom red back behind her. There's Venom straight behind it to stun out the Wolverines once you get to them. Or stun out anything else that tries to support them, tries to come in and deal with the Hermits. Then that would actually be really effective. But the problem was that Spartacus basically only had 10 metal per second to their factory for the entire game. So they weren't using their money. That's the That was the biggest issue. And they still aren't. They're still not pushing enough into that factory. I don't know why. Silent Shadow, once they've got... Now they have an economic advantage, they can push loads into the factory. And they've been pushing into the factory the entire game. They've had a two times production advantage the entire game over Spartacus. So... That's just how it goes. You really have to use your money in order for it to be worthwhile. And Silent Shadow finally spotting that fleet. I mean, the important thing is Spartacus knows more or less the makeup of this area to the northeast, or the southeast, sorry. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, the crab would probably be able to deal with it actually no problem. But what difference does it make? I mean, at this point, Spartacus, they have an uphill battle, regardless. I mean, the Wolverines are being a pain in the butt, there are Hermits coming up. I still think Hermits alone are not enough. Hermits and Venom seems like a good idea. Hermit Venom Redback seems like a decent idea if you have the money for it, but it is fairly expensive to get a large enough army of all three in order to make it worth it. Whereas only having two unit types makes it a lot easier to specialize a bit more and to have what you need. Of course, the Crab can also do a pretty good job minesweeping, or at least a pretty good job not even having a minesweep. Ooh, that is painful. Scorch is coming in as well to try to deal with the crab. But the hermits are in position to help. I mean, the crab's got about 20 seconds left. Unfortunately, it's probably dead. The Scorch will, will focus on it. Oh, and it was locked out in a non-closed position. The Scorchers are not going to be successful, though. That crab should live. The hermits got one more. Yeah, there we go. The crab does live. Barely, but Spartacus can repair it, so that's still enough. Barely being alive, especially when, you know... You have the, your opponent has enough economy, enough energy economy to be able to repair no problem. That's much better than dead, especially with an expensive unit like a crab. Hermit warrior? Well, I guess if you're going for Rar suggesting hermit warrior in the chat, I guess if you are going for cloaky spider mix, that would make sense. Although I don't know, hermit warrior seems like that's pretty much the same thing twice. Like hermit demands, they're no, nah, I think that's a bit too slow and a bit too similar in terms of role. Although the warrior would get rid of a lot of the... I guess the point is to get rid of units that are trying to destroy the hermits close up. Get rid of raiders and such. The warriors would do a good job of that. I'd just be a bit worried they wouldn't manage to push through otherwise. But yeah, that's not a bad idea. It just requires a cloaky factory on top of a spider factory. So it's a bit more involved. I'm thinking... I try to think of inter-factory or intra-factory synergies more than inter-factory synergies just because, well, intra-factory synergies require 600 less metal in order to do. Whereas in Turf Factory Synergies, you have to build the other factory, so that's another minute or so. And the Crab once again, but in a position where nothing can deal with it. Oh, except a Scythe. Okay, never mind. We actually do have a Cloaky... Oh, no, not a Cloaky Bot. We have an Athena. That is complicating things. I forgot to point out, Silent Shadow has built an Athena. They built it a few minutes ago. And that's the reason for the Infiltrator. That's the reason for these sides right now. That's complicating a lot of things. But honestly, the bigger problem is all these Scorchers. You know... Warrior wouldn't be a bad idea. Or Redback. Hermit Redback might not be a bad idea either, honestly. I mean, that's an intra-factory synergy you have right there. But once again, that crab not really able to... Well, the Infiltrator about to stun it again. And once again, the Infiltrator has stunned it right inside of the reach of that Lotus. So this crab is finally dead. It took a while. Took a lot of effort, but only one Infiltrator. That was totally worth it. Same time, though, Spartacus is pretty well set up. Actually, they are going for Venom Hermit, my original suggestion, even though I do think now that maybe Redback Hermit wasn't a bad idea either. But yeah, Venom Hermit, let's see how that goes. Let's actually see if my suggestion, my idea, was a good one. Not sure if that's enough Venoms, though, but let's see. The idea, of course, being the Venom stun out anything coming at the Hermits. Well, okay, we can't see it because apparently they're not traveling together. Come on. It's just kind of how it works. You have to bring them together. Otherwise, what good does it do? And more rapiers. Once again, Spartacus has rebuilt their gunship factory, so they are going to be... No, wait, have they? Oh, yeah, they have. Northwest. I'm sorry. I missed that completely. But yeah, they rebuilt the gunship factory. 
Unfortunately, Spar Silent Shadow was already prepared for anti-air. Fortunately, though, that did clear up the eastern side, allowing Spartacus to just walk through, pretty much. Unfortunately, Silent Shadow is also building their own gunship plant over to the southeast. And that's probably going to make Silent Shadow really happy and make Spartacus regret not dealing with that southeast sooner. Because there's not much that can be done. I mean, there's obviously, you could rush in with, I guess, Crab or Hermits, but it's hard to do when your ground forces are already pretty strained trying to get rid of anything coming in. Like, on defense, there's already a lot of stress. So splitting the army to have some of them attack up this hill, which is already going to be a challenge just because, you know, defenses and attacking up a hill is usually a bad idea because of physics. Especially for units like the Hermits where they are firing a ballistic projectile. They're firing lasers or lightning, it wouldn't be so bad, but with a ballistic projectile, it's totally different. Because when you're dealing with ballistics, you have to deal with the fact that gravity is a thing. And it causes the fire ranges to be effectively reduced, and of course the hills as well, although the hills are more of a problem for direct fire weapons. Regardless, the Hermits are all gone because there really weren't enough of them. And even, I mean, this is, I can kind of see where the Redbacks would have been a good idea, or the Warriors, but Redbacks are what spiders have. Like, the Redbacks on top of this would have killed all the Scorchers while the Hermits were being torn to shreds. Or most of the Scorchers. But honestly, there's so many Scorchers. It's like... Well, 3,000-ish. 3,000, 3,000, 4,000 metal worth of Scorchers. A lot of them died, but that's a lot of metal worth of Scorchers. Silent Shadow... They've just been taking advantage of the fact that they have never been accessing, or very rarely been accessing this game. They've been very productive in their, in their construction, whereas Spartacus left accessing happening for a long time and didn't really have much of an economic advantage. It's not like the last game, where Nortula and G had two times an economic advantage for most of the game, and while they accessed loads of metal, they were still ahead in production capacity. In this case, the two players were about even, but Spartacus is way behind in production capacity. So, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Although part of it is Nortula and G was building a lot of defenses in that game. Spartacus not so much, but more importantly, Spartacus just does not have much to deal with this. But looks like, is their commander going to survive that? Yeah, apparently. I mean, the crashes are going to cause problems here, but the commander might actually have a chance. How many Scorchers are left? Oh, there's 19 Scorchers left. No, th that commander's dead. You only need four, and there's like six coming in here. No, that commander's gone. I think this is game. Like, Silent Shadow's just going to steamroll after getting rid of these rapiers. There's no, there's nothing left. There's no defenses whatsoever. There are a couple Venoms, not really a concern, honestly. There are so many units that those Venoms are not going to matter. They're going to be an inconvenience at most. Like, within a minute at most, enough Scorchers will be built that they'll be able to steamroll. If they haven't already been built enough to steamroll. That's the thing. I mean, the only problem, of course, being the Northwest is essentially impenetrable to Silent Shadow. Although, admittedly, Silent Shadow did just build a gunship plant, so no, it's actually not. Silent Shadow could go and just deal with that right now. They probably will, too. So yeah, this is game. This is just about. I mean, unless Spartacus has some trick up their sleeve, doesn't look like it. More Hermits. No more gunships. And a bunch of Rapiers coming out from Silent Shadow. So this is pretty much over. Hate to be anti-hype like that, but yeah. This is kind of it. Silent Shadow about to make one last push. I mean, the thing is, also the Venoms... Just go down once to sharpshooters, so good luck with that. Next sharpshooter shot, we'll get rid of the last Venom. After that, there's not much more left, so that is that is going to be GG in like 30 seconds at most. Any back and forces? No, jump bot factory. Actually, oh, maybe. There is a jump bot factory coming up. But the energy economy is going to be entirely destroyed, or almost entirely destroyed. There is, obviously, this line of metal of wind generators. That'll help. That's not going to be enough. And Silent Shadow takes the game. There we go. North... They're not... Spartacus throws in the towel right away. Not even with a GG. Just... Just done. So, yeah. That was that. Bit of a weird game. I mean, it really, I think a lot of it came down to the fact that the Southeast was taken. If it weren't for that, Spartacus would have had a much... Okay, part of it was the Southeast. Gave Silent Shadow a place to build up, get a massive economy, not really be harassed. Part of it was... A lot of it, really. Spartacus did not build. At all. I mean, if you look at Metal Excess... Actually, Spartacus... They were behind? Okay, for most of the game, they were ahead in Metal Excess, but... Yeah, it's more they just didn't use as much metal. More so, they didn't build as many units. Like, look at the units built. And remember that spiders and vehicles for their main line assault units have about the same cost and are about the same value. So this is 
pretty telling. Like, for the majority, like, the first few minutes, looks like the first six or seven minutes or so, they were about even. Spartacus was slightly ahead. And then after that, I think that was, this point was about the time the Wolverines started showing up and really wrecking everything. Actually, no, when the Scorcher showed up, the Wolverines were being torn to shreds. When the Scorcher showed up, that's when everything turned around. And then, yeah, after that, although it looks like Silent Shadow lost more units, but it doesn't matter. They were cheap units. But yeah, the armor is so much bigger for Silent Shadow. It really spiked up in the middle of the game. But metal use is about the same, because Spartacus was partly accessing and partly just setting up a bunch of stuff elsewhere. Not really setting up units. But anyway, that was that. Oh, we can look at unit value. Actually, this is about... E no, that was a big dip. See, this is this is the big thing that happened. Like, Sil Spartacus, by unit value, was way, way below Silent Shadow. Mostly due to lack of production capacity. Now, it was a small point where they're about even, but yeah, for pretty much everything past the first half of the game, or first third of the game, Silent Shadow had the unit value advantage, let alone the unit count advantage. Unit value advantage. And they also had hard counters like Crashers. So once the gunships came in, it didn't do anything. And on top of that, the Wolverines pretty much stopped anything else from coming. The Venom, standard Venom Redback pair, which would have completely wrecked Scorchers. Well, the Wolverine mine stopped that, or at least ha hampered it somewhat. And then the Crab, which we saw, got completely wrecked. So yeah, a lot of really good counters. That Athena, I mean, that's the third thing that won for Silent Shadow. That Athena was, man, most valuable unit just about. I mean, the Infiltrator coming in was perfect. Anyhow, that is that for me tonight. Oh, well, anyway, that's it for me tonight. That, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.